Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a comparison between a Ford Mustang GT and a Chevy Camaro SS. This is like the ultimate battle of the muscle cars, super iconic comparison, but Anyways, before we get into the video, I do want to mention if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, I'm going to include a link to my car buying guide in the description down below. And with that being said, let's just get right into the comparison. Starting under the hood of the Camaro SS, we have a Natchez aspirated 6.2 liter V8 that goes through a 10-speed automatic transmission with this particular car. It's good for 455 horsepower and then 455 pound-feet torque. You can also get a six-speed manual with the Camaro SS, but I usually see automatics nowadays. Now, moving from the Camaro SS to the Ford Mustang, we have a Natchez aspirated 5 liter V8 that goes through a 10-speed automatic transmission as well. It's good for 450 horsepower and then 410 pound-feet of torque. You can also get this with a six-speed manual if you want. Uh, the Camaro is the same from a power output perspective as the previous year, but the Mustang is actually down on power uh, because last year, 2021, you could get 460 horsepower and then 420 pound-feet of torque, but because of emissions restrictions, they've had to decrease the power. And also on the performance variants, uh, like you know the Mach 1, for example, used to have over 480 horsepower, but it's just uh, kind of a, the world we live in right now. But still, 450 horsepower, that's strong. Uh, and if you guys are wondering, obviously, since this has less torque, it does feel a little bit less punchy off the line compared to what you have with the Camaro, since that 6.2 is just so torquey. But moving from that to the front end of the Camaro, uh, you guys can see here, we've got the venting there in the center, which definitely looks cool and aggressive. And then we've got the new signature lights that have been pretty controversial since they were released. SS logo. And then you can see you've got the blacked out Chevy bow tie with the chrome accenting around it. And then you can see the rest of the front grille here. It's really aggressive looking, actually. You've got the daytime running light down below. And, you know, other than the headlights, you know, the rest of the design, I think, looks great. It's just those daytime running lights are kind of interesting. Now, popping over to the Mustang here, you guys can see with the hood how you've got that accenting on either side. And uh, this is another thing that's been controversial is the headlights on this version of the Mustang. People have been kind of like back and forth on them. And then you can see there with the turn signal, it's actually down below the light. And again, just really aggressive looking front end, you know, lots of oh, like wide open venting, just like on the Camaro. And at the very bottom, just really aggressive front splitter as well. And so it has this cool, you know, aggressive muscle car, sports car type appearance from a front end perspective. And then popping back over to the Camaro, wheels are all blacked out, which is cool. Uh, with this particular segment of uh, muscle car, uh, they do a staggered setup. So they do narrower tires in the front and then wider tires in the rear. And you guys can see there with the brake caliper, how that's red, which looks great. You got the Camaro logo there on the side. And especially finished in silver, I love how this car looks with the contrast between the black, the red, and the silver. And yeah, you can see there, especially with like the body lines, really sharp and looks amazing. Now, popping the side of the Mustang, uh, same thing. That They'll typically do a staggered uh, setup here with the Mustangs. It seems like the Challenger is the only one that they really will do like the same size front end rear. I guess that's what you got to do when you're driving a boat. Anyways, Brembo brakes here uh, with this Mustang because it has the performance package. And then you see the molding there for the fender. You got the 5.0 badge on the side and see the side skirt there at the bottom. Now this one is finished in black, so there's not as much, there's not like contrast like what you have in the Camaro, but I still think it's a really good looking car. It has that cool like, you know, kind of more Batmobile type appearance to it, which is definitely solid. And something that's really cool here 
You can see there in the rear with the tire and wheel setup, you still have big rotors in the rear. They're not as big as the front, but they're still big. Here's the key fob for the Camaro. So it's Chevy's normal key fob. It's not their newest key fob actually, because they have changed it for certain vehicles. But this is a thing that's kind of an issue with the Camaro is the trunk is actually relatively spacious, but the opening's not all that large. And so it's, it's hard to get items in it, but you know, at least it has it, right? Now going over the rest of the rear, you can see here with the spoiler there at the back end, definitely a cool appearance. Gives it a little bit more of an aggressive appearance as well. And then here's with the taillights. Sorry about the camera shaking in this footage. I remember this is the video I filmed when I was freezing cold. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish the video. <laughs> um, got the exhaust tips down below. And yeah, again, just a really cool appearance from a rear end perspective. And here's the key fob for the Mustang. You can see the unlock lock remote start and then the opening there for the trunk. Got the Mustang horse there on the back. And here's the interior space. So the opening is larger on the Mustang uh, than it is on the Camaro. So it is a little bit more practical from that perspective. And notice the little fix a flat kit there underneath. But yeah, I think they've I think they've done a good job with, you know, again, it's working with what they have basically. So it's still a muscle car, so it's not gonna be amazingly practical, but it's still relatively practical. And then here is the spoiler on the back again. Got this cool aggressive spoiler there with the Mustang. And you can see what a GT looks like without the spoiler. I think spoiler is the way to go, just my personal opinion. Sequential turn signal lights. It's a big thing with the Mustang. I remember just always thinking that was the coolest thing when I was younger, still do. And then you can see here with the diffuser and then pretty similar design with the exhaust tips, actually. I think that's uh, interesting. It's like they're uh, kind of copying each other a little bit with the cars. Uh, but yeah, back on the Mustang's definitely the better looking end on that particular car. It's just my opinion there. And then popping here on in the inside with this Camaro, this is pretty cool color combination. So uh, notice here at the padding and down below, just bright red. And then you've got the... LED interior lighting, right? The ambient lighting. And then notice here with the mirrors, you do have blind spot monitoring. Bose sound system, got the Camaro logo right there. And then you can see here with the nice leather seats in the back. And it's, it's so funny, the back seats are so nice in muscle cars with the appearance and coloration, but then they're like unusable. Got the SS logo there on the seat and you can see the bolstering and everything, power adjustments. Pedal layout down below, you can two pedal layout because it's the automatic. And then it does have the heads up display and definitely a nice looking cockpit there. Now, popping back over to the Mustang. Uh, this, I mean, I'm just being honest here. Uh, the material use is nice, but it doesn't look as nice as the Camaro. And it's not as like bright, but I mean, this one's, you know, just black on black, which is fine, right? A lot of people like that. They just want simplistic, but the Camaro in my mind just pops out a little bit more at the interior. Uh, and also just the material use. I, I feel like I mean, this is a, you know, more upgraded Mustang. And you see the seats look nice, right? Functionality on them is great and back seats too. But just look at the finish there on like the leather trim. It just doesn't look quite as appealing as what you have with the Camaro from an aesthetic perspective. So yeah, it still kind of has that, uh, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't say budget, but like it, it, it just doesn't look quite as uh, beautiful as what you have with the Camaro, in my opinion. But the Recaro seats are amazing. Like the bolstering on them is fantastic. They're very comfortable. And I mean, you know, you can't go wrong with Recaro seats. It just maybe it's just like the skin, I guess, that I think they should uh, change. Cheap pedal layout again. And then you can see the trim there with the Mustang. Definitely a nice little thing there. And you got the light controls. And then you can see the paddle shifters there on the back of the steering wheel for the 10 speed automatic transmission. But going from that back to the Camaro, love the startup sound with the Camaro. You guys heard the exhaust clip at the beginning of the video. That's why I put it at the beginning so you guys could, you know, enter the video with some fun. Uh, but here's the steering wheel. So again, notice the contrast between the black and the red and notice the material use on the steering wheel. I think it looks great. You do have a lot of plastic, but that's typical for muscle cars, right? Because it's kind of like you're getting budget performance with a muscle car. Got your SS logo right there. And then you can see the turn signal light stock and then the windshield wiper stock on the other side. And then here's the center gauge cluster. So you've got analog gauges on either side. And you have that screen there in the center which you can scroll through some different menus on the car, which is pretty cool with the overall setup on it. Man, this was a fun review to film. Almost out of gas and it was freezing cold. <laughs> you got the touring sport track and then snow and ice for the different drive modes. And when you put it into the sport and track, it opens up the valves, it's a little bit louder. And then backup camera, pretty normal 
setup that you see on most modern cars. Trajectory lines do turn with the steering wheel and resolution is great. Uh, the infotainment system is fantastic. I'll tell you have ambient lighting around it too, which is cool. Um, but yeah, it's really responsive. It's easy to use. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. I lived with this infotainment system for a little bit and I, I really liked it. So I think that Chevy did a good job with that. And look at all the different ambient light colors that you can choose with the Camaro. That's definitely uh, just a cool little feature to have. Aside from uh, our little ambient light thing, you guys can see down below, we've got our climate controls, heated, cooled seats, dual zone climate as well. And you got the twist events, which I'm a huge fan of because I ah, get it fan. Um, it just, it just feels cool. Got the shifter there for the automatic. You do have a manual shift function. And then notice you got the spill control, drive mode, select parking brake right there. And then you got a little charging port. And then notice here with the padding for the center console setup. And then notice there on the front dash and also with the glove box set up as well. Definitely a nice aesthetic there. And popping here up to the top, we actually get a sunroof in the Camaro. It's something you can't get in the Mustang. And then camera mirror, for my camera will focus. Eh, not really, but it does have the camera mirror. Anyways, here's the window sticker for the Camaro 2SS. So you guys can see the standard equipment. And this is uh, the shocking part is the price is surprisingly inexpensive. I know it seems expensive, but you guys will see in a moment. $48,000 for the total MSRP after options. Popping back into the Mustang. I love the engine stop start button. Ooh, look at that gauge cluster. That's pretty cool. So here's the steering wheel. You guys can see the padding all over the steering wheel. And then notice the Mustang horse there in the center. Controls there for the center sack voice command controls as well. And you got like your navigation button, Mustang horse, all that fun stuff right there. It's just cool that like all the little icons they have of the Mustang horse throughout the car. Paddle shifters there on the back. And yeah, overall, I think it's a good looking steering wheel. Uh, both, uh, you know, trim pieces on are, are very nice. So I think that Ford did a good job with that. And then you got your regular stocks, like turn signal, windshield wiper stock, you know, all that normal stuff. And then popping into the center with the gauge cluster, full digital gauge cluster. That is where the Ford does win. Uh, it's having this full digital gauge cluster because it looks a little bit nicer from an aesthetic perspective. Some of you guys might like the analog in the Camaro, but I, I think this is cooler. And it allows you to have a complete change when you change the drive modes with the gauge cluster. So I think that's kind of like another thing that just makes the Mustang feel just a little bit more special, right? And so, yeah, I think that Ford's definitely nailed it from a gauge cluster perspective with the Mustang and with the drive modes, frankly, it's just like, boom, changes completely. So yeah, I'm a fan. And then also notice there's so much customization with the Mustang. You can change the steering, the dampers, the exhaust, like everything changes when you change the drive mode. So it feels like a, it's crazy nowadays that like, you know, the same car that just feels completely different with different drive modes. Whereas before it's like, well, if you want the car to drive different, you got to change out the suspension. Ah, you got to change out the steering. You got to change out the everything. Whereas now it's like, I oh, can just press a button, change the drive mode. And then the car kind of transforms. So I think that's just a cool kind of like modern car thing in general. And I think that they've showcased it very well with the Mustang. Obviously got to have the oil pressure there at the top, kind of like an homage to older muscle cars, which yeah, it's kind of cool. I like how they have the vents on either side as well. Infotainment system, uh, just you guys can see resolution on the camera is great. Got a backup camera just like the Camaro. The zoom function there. It's funny that they put that on every single vehicle, even vehicles that you're never going to tow with. Um, but uh, anyways, infotainment system, just easy to use. Response time is great. Uh, it doesn't look as pretty as the Camaro's infotainment system, but since functionality is the same and response time is the same, like they're both great options. So I don't have one pick over the other. And you guys can see the heated steering wheel control there at the in, within the infotainment system. Got dual zone climate, just like the Camaro, but obviously the climate controls aren't as cool because you're not twisting a little dial there inside the car. And then you can see here with the dual zone climate controls. Now, since this has the Recaro seats, you don't get heated or cooled seats. So you have a heated steering wheel, but you don't have heated or cooled seats, which is kind of strange. Stop, start button. And then you guys can see some of the little toggle switches down below for like the drive mode, the steering wheel and all that. It looks so cool. Shifter for that 10 speed automatic transmission definitely another nice feature with the mustang just with how it looks and, and the actuation with it it doesn't feel quite as nice like if you guys have ever shifted with the um 991 porsche shifters it doesn't feel quite as nice as that but it, it has like a similar feel uh with the automatics that is with the 991 911 automatic and so then here's the center console setup you can see the mustang horse there at the 
top. Always got to have those Mustang logos all over. Regular glove box. And then popping here up to the top. Again, can't get a center for the Mustang at all. They just don't offer it as an option. But all black headliner. And then you got a regular mirror. No camera mirror like in the Camaro. That camera mirror helps out a lot, especially with the Camaro. Visibility is horrible in that car. But it would help out with the Mustang too, frankly. Now here's a window sticker for this 2022 Mustang GT Premium. So again, this is, you know, I feel like this is a pretty com fair comparison, you know, with these options on these cars. You guys can obviously argue with me in the comment section below if you don't agree. But there's a big price difference, $57,000 for the Mustang. You can see the options this particular one has. And uh, so, like, I feel like both the cars have, like, solid performance stuff on the outside and then solid luxury stuff in the interior for a muscle car. And, you know, just a $9,000 price difference between both of the cars. It's just crazy to me. So I guess this is uh, getting me into summing things up. So from an exterior aesthetics perspective, I feel like there's just, there's Mustang people and Camaro people, but I'm a neutral person because I have owned both. I had a Mustang GT, well, Shelby GT350, and then I had a Camaro ZL1 1LE. And I like both of them for different reasons from an aesthetic perspective. I think they both look great on the outside. From an interior perspective, I feel like I love the Recaro seats, but I feel like the material use in the Camaro is just a little bit nicer on the seats and all that. And I feel like the interior looked a little bit cooler with the Camaro compared to the Mustang. The Mustang interior didn't feel as like upscale as the Camaro. Neither of them have like upscale interiors, but the Camaro interior just feels a little bit more upscale. That's just kind of what it looks like. And then from a sound perspective, um, I love the sound of that 6.2 V8, but I love the sound of the Coyote V8. So it's, that's, I mean... That's a tough one. Six is either way. They both sound amazing. From a driving perspective, it's also interesting. So they both drive amazingly well for muscle cars. They both have that sporty feel from a muscle car perspective. Uh, that being said, the Camaro does feel slightly more nimble than the Mustang. Um, but the Mustang, I feel like, feels slightly smoother at higher speeds. So it's kind of, again, sixes with that. Transmissions are both just as responsive. Uh, they both have great six-speed manuals nowadays as well, frankly, so you can't go wrong either way. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a tough pick. But $9,000, that's the thing that keeps hitting me is like that GT doesn't feel like it was $9,000 more car than that Camaro 2 SS. So, you know, I usually don't pick winners with these videos, but what I will say is I feel like in this particular comparison, uh, the Mustang's amazing, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's a great car, but I feel like the, the Camaro was a slightly better value, you know, option to option, engine to engine, all that kind of stuff from a price perspective. Let me know what you guys think, but there you go.